Welcome back, lore lovers. Today, we are diving into the epic saga of Primarch Robot Gulliman, the Lord Commander of the Imperium and the shining beacon of hope in the grim darkness of the Warhammer 40k universe. This video comes as a second part of Gilliman's story, and now our Primarch finds himself on Davin, where a fierce battle erupted as Sanguinius fought a demon while Gilliman and Dale Johnson attempted to rescue him. Their combined forces finally put aside differences and united against a common enemy, culminating in a hard-fought victory that saw Davin obliterated. With the destruction of Davin, a path through the ruined storm of Terra was revealed, but it was heavily guarded by traitor fleets. Gilliman and Dale Johnson decided their forces would engage the traitor while Sanguinius and the Blood Angels made a direct run for Terra, as foretold in Sanguinius' vision. Their strategy paid off, allowing the Blood Angels to reach the throne world as the ruined storm began to recede. As the Ultramarines advanced towards Terra, they faced the Iron Warriors in grueling battles, incurring heavy losses yet preserving forward. Gilliman's forces finally approached the Imperial Palace, but he arrived too late to prevent the culmination of the Siege of Terra. The long years of the Horus heresy had taken their toll. The traitor legions commanded by Horus launched a devastating assault on the Imperial Palace believing they had neutralized many loyalist forces. Yet, the steadfast defense held long enough for reinforcements to arrive. In orbit, Horus received dire news. The Ultramarines, Dark Angels and Space Wolves were mere hours away. Faced with the impending arrival of loyalist reinforcements, Horus made a fateful decision. Lowering the shields of his flagship, he allowed the Emperor and his allies to board and ultimately slay him, thus ending the heresy. The Emperor, gravely wounded, was interred within the Golden Throne, leaving the Imperium in disarray. The Ultramarines arrived too late to witness Horus' defeat, but Gilliman refused to allow the Imperium to fall. He dispatched forces across the galaxy to quell invasions and unrest, determined to restore order as the Royalist factions regrouped. In the aftermath of the heresy, the Loyalist legions faced significant losses, with only a fraction remaining. Gilliman, taking charge of the Council of Terra, established the Lord Commander of the Imperium to navigate the chaos. His reforms were crucial, he transformed the Astartes into chapters of 1000 warriors, dispersing the original legions into smaller entities to prevent the concentration of power. This led to the creation of the Codex Astartes, a military doctrine that reshaped the Space Marine chapters and reinforced the Imperium's military structure. The second founding occurred seven years after Horus' death, creating numerous successor chapters, particularly from the Ultramarines, who became the primogenitors of new chapters. Their legacy endured, with Gilliman venerated as their founding father. For a century following the second founding, Gilliman led the Ultramarines and confronted the remnants of Chaos. He faced Alpharius of the Alpha Legion on Escrador, successfully killing him, yet the Alpha Legion endured, showcasing their resilience. During this time, Gilliman commissioned Archmagus Dominus Belisarius Cole to develop a means to resurrect him and to create the primary space marine, enhancing the Emperor's original design. Gilliman met his fate at the Battle of Tessala in 121 Millennium 31st, gravely wounded by the demon Primarch Fulgrim. Fatally poisoned, he was returned to Macrage and placed a stasis field where he has remained for 10 millennia. The Temple of Correction, located within the fortress of Hera on Macrage, became the shrine of Gilliman, attracting millions of pilgrims. Its grandeur showcased the Ultramarine's architectural prowess, designed by Gilliman himself. Gilliman's body lay preserved in a stasis field, untouched by time, with legends claiming that his wounds showed signs of healing. Despite scientific skepticism, many believed in the miracle of his preservation, perpetuating his legacy across generations. For 10 millennia, the Emperor of Mankind has remained immobile on the Golden Throne of Terra, his once great form reduced to a mere husk. Though his vision, the Imperium of Man, persists. It languishes under despair and suspicion, beleaguered by heretics, witches and aliens. The Imperium survives only through the countless sacrifices of its citizens. As the 41st millennium wanes, the Imperium faces its gravest challenge yet. Orcs ravage the galaxy, the Tau Empire encroaches in the east, Tyranids swarm from the void, and Necrons awaken to reclaim their domains. Yet more perilous than any, the forces of Chaos initiate a, a monumental invasion. Under Abaddon the Despoiler's command, the 13th Black Crusade engulfs countless worlds in darkness, while violent warp storms rend the galaxy. 
the High Lords of Terra blind to the reality, sent billions to their doom in a desperate attempt to salvage the Imperium. In this dark hour, it is the Eldari who perceived what the Imperium lacks, a hero, a manifestation of the Emperor's will, a Primarch. Amidst this turmoil, the living saint, Celestine, leads the Cadian shock trooper regiments to defending Cas Craft on Cadia, the lone bastion against the Chaos on Sloth. Cadia, positioned at the Cadian Gate, the only stable exit from the Eye of Terror, stands resolute against overwhelming odds. The Imperial defenders, led by Lord Castellan Ursarkar e Creed, mounted a valiant defense. Heroes from across the Imperium rallied to Cadia's cause, including the Black Templars under Marshal Marius Almarich and the Imperial Feast led by Captain Thor Garadon. As despair mounts, Celestine arrives, her miracles igniting hope among the wary defenders. Meanwhile, Inquisitor Katarinia Greyfax, recently freed from Necron captivity, adds her strength to the effort. The key to victory lies with Archmagos Dominus Belisarius Kol, who, guided by the Harlequin Cylindry Veilwalker, unlocks the secrets of the ancient Necron-built black pylons that dot Cadia's surface. Abaddon seeks to destroy these structures, which weaken the barrier between reality and the Immaterium. Kol envisions a chance to close the Eye of Terror forever, but fate proves cruel. Despite their valiant efforts, the defenders are overwhelmed, and Cadia is shattered as chaos floods the world, a rift in the world expands, marking the end of Cadia. However, a sliver of hope remains. Cole's ancient pact, alongside a mysterious artifact he possesses, could turn the tide. The surviving Imperials, calling themselves the Celestian Crusade in honor of Celestine, flee to the McCracken system pursued by the forces of Chaos. At the same time, the Eldari are shaken by a cosmic upheaval as Inyad, their god of the dead, awakens partially. Ivrain, the daughter of Shades, becomes his prophet after a remarkable resurrection. Escaping from the dark city of Kamara, she brings news of Inyad's awakening to craftworld Biltan. Ivrain's follower, the Inari, believe in a cycle of death and rebirth as their salvation. Driven by desperation, Ivrain leads her forces to Clasius, a moon in the Cadia system, arriving just in time to aid the Celestian Crusade against the Black Legion. As the 41st millennium nears its end, Ultramar is beset by foes, Tyranids, Orcs, and the dark forces of Chaos led by the demon prince Emkar. The Ultramarines, under Marnius Kalgar, confront these threats with steadfast resolve, driving the Chaos forces away. In the wake of Cadia's fall, Abaddon learns of Kol's survival and the potential threat he poses. To quash this emerging danger, he dispatches a portion of, of his Black Fleet to invade Ultramar. The Celestian Crusade arrives at McCracky during this turmoil where they join forces with the Ultramarines to repel the Chaos invasion. Cole reveals that he possesses the means to revive Primarch Robot Gilliman, whose return could change the tide of the conflict. In a desperate final stand, as the Black Legion storms the Temple of Correction, Ivrain invokes the power of Inyad. With Cole's technology and the God's intervention, Gilliman is resurrected, his fury driving back the Chaos attackers and revitalizing the Imperial forces. Sorry for the short break, but I'm here to remind you that if you are enjoying this journey through the lore, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Lion Drag. Your support helps the channel grow and reach more lore lovers like you, allowing us to explore even more fascinating tales together. With Gilliman's return, the fate of Ultramar shifts dramatically. He is crowned the rightful leader of the Ultramarines and his strategic brilliance leads to the explosion of chaos from McCraggy within months. However, the resurrected Primarch grapples with the grim reality of the Imperium's current state, one defined by tyranny and ignorance. Finding renewed hope, Gilliman resolves to journey Terra to consult with the Emperor and forge a path forward for humanity. Thus begins the Terran Crusade, a pivotal chapter in the ongoing saga of the Imperium of Man. In the vast void ship graveyard on Luna, Primarch Robot Gilliman leads his Terran Crusade forces against Magnus the Red and his Thousand Sons following the chaotic events of the 13th Black Crusade. Gathering Imperial forces from across the galaxy, Gilliman sets sail from McCraggy, leaving the Ultramarines under Marnius Kalgar's command. As his fleet traverses the turbulent warp near the Maelstrom, they are ambushed by Magnus, who invokes a powerful sorcerer's ritual, trapping the Terran Crusade within the depths of the warp. Time in the warp stretches and warps reality, as the fleet drifts from one demon world to another, suffering continuous assaults from Chaos forces. Meanwhile, Gilliman grapples with a growing sense of guilt and frustration, as their escape seems impossible. Amidst the Chaos, hope arrives in the form of a psychic message from Eldrad Ultran, the Asuriani Farseer, providing vital coordinates to navigate through the tumult. 
Emerging from the warp, the battered crusade encounters another chaos fleet, the Red Corsairs, commanded by the Lord of Change, Kairos Fateweaver. As the Imperial forces are besieged, Kairos employs his dark powers to ensnare Gilliman in chains woven from his own guild, forcing the fleet to surrender. They are brought to a hidden Blackstone fortress, where they face a grim feint until the intervention of the Harlequins, led by Silandric Veilwalker and the enigmatic Cypher. In exchange for a promise to present Cypher to the Emperor, the Harley Queens liberate Gilliman and his followers, offering a path back to Terra through the webway. Fighting through the fortress, they confront Scarbrand, a bloodthirster of Korn, whom Gilliman ultimately defeats. They journey through the webway only to find Magnus and his thousand sons awaiting them in the Labyrinth Dimension. With the aid of the Harley Queens, the Sisters of Silence and the Imperial Fist, they engage the thousand sons in a fierce battle ultimately banishing Magnus and sealing the webway portal to prevent future incursions. Gilliman, triumphant yet deeply affected by his encounter with the Emperor, returns to the Imperial Palace, where he meets his father for the first time in ten millennia. In a profound communion, Gilliman senses the coldness that now envelops the Emperor, realizing the toll of suffering on his father. Despite this, he declares his renewed commitment to the Imperium, assuming the mantle of Lord Commander once again. He vows to assemble the mightiest forces since the Great Crusade, igniting the era in Damitus. Deep beneath Mars, Robot Gilliman and Archmagus Belisarius Cole oversee the culmination of a decade-long endeavor, the creation of the primary Space Marine. Drawing upon the genetic templates of the original Space Marines, Cole crafts these new warriors physically superior and equipped with advanced armament, including the Mark X Tacticus Pattern Power Armor and the new Redemptor Dreadnought. As the Indomitus Crusade launches to reclaim the Imperium, the Primaris Marines join their ranks, with many existing chapters welcoming them while others remain wary. Before the Crusade can fully commence, Gilliman must defend Terra once more from Korn's forces during the Battle of Lion's Gate. The demonic legions threaten the Imperial Palace, but under Gilliman's leadership, the combined forces of the Adeptus Custodis, Sisters of Silence and Primaris Marines repel the assault. Following this victory, Gilliman assembles the Indomitus Crusade, marking a new era of hope. With a vast fleet composed of various Imperial forces, including the newly founded Primaris chapters, Gilliman embarks on a campaign to liberate beleaguered worlds. Among his first victories is Baal, where he aids the Blood Angels against High Fleet Leviathan. He names Dante as the Lord Regent of the Imperium Nihilus, tasking him with reclaiming lost territories. After 12 years, the Crusade reaches a pivotal moment at the Battle of Raukos where Gilliman declares the Imperium Sanctus stabilized. His attention then shifts to Ultramar, where the forces of Nurgle launch an invasion amidst the Plague Wars, aiming to corrupt and conquer the Primarch's realm. As the Great Rift fractures the Imperium, Ultramar faces relentless assaults from Nurgle's forces, led by Mortarion and his dead guard. The invasion escalates, targeting key systems like Lax and Espandor. Mortarion's forces seek to solidify their grip on Ultramar, but Gilliman, now the Lord Commander, mobilizes to confront the threat. After the Battle of Raukos, Gilliman leads an assault on the Expander system, liberating it from the grip of chaos and destroying Mortarion's plague engines. With renewed vigor, he reorganizes the Ultramarines and their allies, re-establishing the Tetra Council and expand Ultramar's borders and strengthen its defenses. The conflict culminates in a massive armored clash on Parmenio, where Gilliman faces off against the forces of Nurgle. With strategic brilliance and sheer force, he slays the great unclean one, Karamas, securing a significant victory for the Imperium. As the tide of war shifts, Gilliman's relentless pursuit of victory against Chaos heralds a new chapter in the Imperium's struggle for survival, as the echoes of the Indomitus Crusade continue to resonate throughout the galaxy. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of Robot Gilliman's remarkable journey. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag for more Lord Leech content. And don't forget to join our Discord community where we can dive deeper into discussions and theories. Until next time, keep the Lord alive.